when I was about five or six years old, uh, I did visit a cinema in the north of England. At the center of it, an orphan who was really struggling with life. I looked exactly like the little boy. And at the end of the film, the cinema owner spotted me in the crowd, realized that I was an identical twin to little Pepito in the film, lifted me up above the audience, exclaiming, it's little Pepito, <laughs> it's little Pepito. Uh -huh. And I thought, oh, this is the life. I rather like this. For years after that, I was followed by, well, an imaginary camera crew. Everywhere I went as a little child. You're a four-year-old kid barging in on your parents, making love, convinced that your father is killing your mother. So now you're the father who's in the middle of it, who's not killing his wife, yelling at his four-year-old to get the hell out of the bedroom. Yeah, yeah. Go yeah. back to bed. Go back to bed. Yeah, yeah I'll, come, I'll come later. Go back to bed. There is a scramble at the moment to outlaw tragedy from our, our map. Mm -hmm. our theatres, our TV screens, our movie screens. It's got to be fun. It doesn't, you know. It, yeah. Fun isn't healing. It doesn't add one iota to the growth of the soul. Mm -hmm. It has its place. But there has to be a balance of boys and girls, it can get very dark. And that's what tragedy says to us. Yeah. And through that darkness, you can struggle to find your kind of light, but you have to include the darkness, and the light. I'm going to ask you to play Othello, having realized the horror of his mistake. As a recent college graduate from a B-level acting school would do for a casting and do it poorly, overdoing it. Okay. Here we go. Uh -huh. Actors are an amazing combination of narcissism and total lack of self-worth. <laughs> if I cannot surprise myself, I'm not going to surprise my director, and I'm not going to surprise my audience. You're the husband of a female activist. She's taken chances risking her life for the cause. You, as your husband, go through a series of feelings from uh, pleading and desperate to furious and angry. What are you doing? You have children. You have a family here. You have a, you have a life here. You, you go out and march with people. The, the cops are knocking people down. There's guns there. What are you doing? And she's right at the camera. Yeah. That's great. That's great. That process of alchemy that turns ink on a page into flesh and blood that people can embrace and recognize as being part of their own lives. And it's through that urgency to reach and to tell stories and to be a tribal storyteller that gives me the energy to delve into my own knowledge and experience and use a huge amount of imagination to make something out of nothing. There's an awful lot of claptrap talked about acting. The truth is we do make something out of nothing, yeah. using our voice, our body, and our imagination. That's all we have. I think that I'm related to the person who used to tell stories around a fire at night 40, 50, 60, 70,000 years ago to keep away the fear of darkness, to convince the tribe but through telling stories that the sun will come up again, and by the light of the bonfire and my stories, the wilder predators will be kept at bay and the tribe will be held together for another night through being a storyteller. You're an unlucky, uh, chronic, addicted gambler at a roulette table in Vegas. Seeing your desperate all-in bet on 21 red pay off as the little ball drops against all odds into the hope for slot. Your promise to God to quit forever if he lets you win already forgotten. You place the bet. They roll the ball. Uh, uh, uh. 
But there was one character that you've played that astounded me, where from the time you were on the screen, I sat up in my chair and couldn't believe what I saw, and that was Don Logan in Sexy Beast. And I wonder how you found that character. Don Logan was the closest you'll ever get to a modern Iago. That through jealousy and envy and lack of love, he would destroy, he would bring down, he would bring chaos. So already my body was tingling, exploring, hunting for this embodiment of uh, a scream for love. I realized that Don was an abused child and all my compassion for the abused came to the surface. Uh, I, I cared for him whilst playing him, but I knew that there was no redemption for him, that he would never be healed, he would never be cured. He'd gone barking like a mad dog until he was shot.